I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to give it a shot. This is the outline I have freehanded for a scythe. I made a prototype out of tin foil and folded it. Um, that's what this bit is here. That's going to turn into the tang by being folded under. I will explain that in a minute. Um, this is out of a piece of sheet steel, which I have owned for several years and not used. Which is what? 16 gauge thick, not terribly heavy. And I'm going to see if I can't cold forge me a small scythe. If I can, it will be awesome. Safety first. Okay, there's the roughed out blade. When in operation, this thing goes right through. And I was able to chew through this rough shape, leaving fairly little waste. I'm actually pleased with it. If I wanted to use even less waste, I might dispense with this thing. We'll see if it's actually useful in the cutting process. Never actually used a scythe. Um, as you can see, it's covered with burrs. It's quite sharp around the edges, so I'll probably clean that up with a sander or a file, and then proceed to hammering. Okay, so I just folded it over the anvil and managed to bash it into this shape. So that's the 45 degree angle established. Okay, so I folded that over and tapped it down flat. So now we've got a shape that looks like this. Origami with Metal Man, it's a thing. On this side, I misjudged where the curve should be, so this isn't gonna show as pretty as I'd like unless I cut this a little bit, which I could do, and I might, but I also might not. This is, after all, a prototype. Next up, I'm going to fold this again inward to make it thinner, and then we'll see. Okay, so now that part is folded down, flat against the anvil. Now I'm going to flip it over and tap it down. This is the kind of quick and dirty technique I imagine orcs would use. Okay, so that fold is now completed. This is folded down flat. Now I've got way too much material in here. I'm trying to decide what to do with it. This is a question. Right now it's doing a beautiful job supporting this, but it's also way too wide to fit onto a snath. So maybe I could... Oh, I know what I'll do. Sneaky, sneaky. I'll fold it again. That'll simplify things. Okay, that is so much better. Now you can see that it is... The blade is essentially folded in between two pieces of steel because it's wrapped around. So that shape was spot-on perfect except for this sharp little bit right here. But man, that works just about beautifully. Okay, next up, um, we're gonna fold this up to stiffen the blade. And if I do it right, I'll put a slight curve in it this way and get that curve going, which takes a little bit more hammer work, but I think I'll manage. Holy mackerel, I think it worked! Um, I managed to put in that bend, curved, and that has stiffened the blade to the point where I can't bend it with my fingers anymore, despite how thin it is. That is fabulous. I extended that bend all the way here to the tip, and now I just need to add the spike, which sits it into the into the snath, but I could do that as simply as drilling a hole and sticking a nail through it. But yeah, scythe blade. <laughs> Rather proud of that. Right, so that is now sharp and honed with a file. This is mild steel, so it won't hold an edge very well, but with peening, it might work hardened, and so uh, at the very least, it's good enough for uh, government work or what I'm going to do with it. Now, I've taken this to the anvil and bent an angle into it that is going to support the snath. For the snath, I have this poplar dowel because it was convenient. Now, I'm going to set it on the snath. This is the finished scythe. There it is on the snath. It's attached here with two nails, or rather a giant staple that goes through the two holes that indexes where it goes on the snath. And then I just reinforced it with some baling twine for a test run. I'm out here in the pasture, and I'm going to try this one-handed, just to see. Oh my gosh. This is going to work. Okay, now I've got to give it a, a real test run. I'm going to set this down. Not bad for a few seconds of work. Completely untrained. You can see here the pile of grass 
That is amazingly cool. I need to adjust it a little bit more and figure out what I'm doing. But uh, <laughs> that is the Cheater Scythe. So there you have it. This is the Cheater Scythe. Made entirely by metal origami, basically. Tinsmithing. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe below, and if you found this video particularly interesting, we'd really appreciate it if you would share it with friends. We're trying to get the word out about the sort of projects that we do, so much obliged, and until next time.